Hello everybody, this is Thomas, and I am the Karate Armchair Historian. I just want to say, um, as an introduction to today's video, uh, one of the most interesting things about living in our age, in our times, is our access to the internet. Um, I feel very privileged to be living in times where you can read a book about some kind of historical occurrence and then you can go on the internet and you can actually see the videos from that uh, the historical occurrence that you have read about or for instance you can read about a battle that took place and you can go into the actual battle place and basically you can verify the facts that you have read in the book on your own I think this is pretty amazing and our generation is obviously the very first one that is able to do something like this now today um, we're going to once again talk about just very briefly about this book um, one of my last videos was a demonstration uh, performed by Yahara and Richard Amos and today I wanted to show a couple of videos that kind of follow up on this demonstration uh, there is a video shot by CNN, which contains an interview with Richard Amos and just talks about his experiences in Japan. And in Chasing Bushido, he does go into some details about how that video came about. And um, also, I'm going to show a short video, also done by CNN, about Iahara and about his uh, business, the security business that he ran. And also, of course, this business is also described in Chasing Bushido by Amos. Um, I'm not sure whether or not the Yahara video is the one that Amos refers to in his book. It appears to have been shot a little bit later than the early 90s, uh, but perhaps it's still an interesting uh, video to watch. And does it really answer the question whether or not Yahara was the badass that people seem to, to think that he was? I, you know, um, um, it's definitely. He's definitely one of those, one of those karate people who, who walk the walk, um, and quite often when um, MMA, BJJ people say that Shotokan or karate does not work, Yahara is of course mentioned as an example of it really working in reality. Um, of course, the ethics of uh, of this are are questionable, but that's to that's that's up to each each one of us to decide. Um, well, anyways, enjoy these two videos and thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day. 31-year-old Richard Amos from Croydon, England is a real-life karate kid. For more than two decades, he has studied and worked to perfect this traditional Japanese martial art. He loved it so much, he moved to Tokyo in 1989. You have a sense of uh, comfort and well-being here. Although you could be on the, on, virtually on the poverty line, you'll be living cleanly and safely. And you know, there's nice restaurants here. It's, it's, very, uh, it's very easy to live comfortably here, even though it's very expensive. I live in a tiny apartment, but it doesn't really matter. You know, it's, you get used to that. And it's very, very safe. <laughs> You wouldn't expect safety to be a concern for someone who became a black belt in karate at age 16, but in the years since Amos saw his first Bruce Lee movie at age 10, inspiring him to begin studying the art, he has grown to appreciate the Japanese way of life. These days he lives, eats, and speaks as the locals do, supporting himself through teaching in the karate dojo. If you assimilate too much, it's a bit strange for them not behaving like a foreigner. Even though he has worked to adapt himself to Japanese society, Amos understands that as in the art of karate, there is a rigid structure in this country which cannot be changed. No matter how long he stays in Japan, Amos, like other gaijin, will have to continue to walk a delicate path. So there's so many rules and there's this huge code of ethics and how to behave that's unwritten. And uh, foreigners tend to blunder through and make so many mistakes that it's, it's, it's untrue. Or they do it too much, they've studied up too much, and it becomes a little bit off-putting for the Japanese. You have to find a balance, it's very difficult. 
difficult, but as the young man from South London has already shown, it can be done. <laughs> Andrea Koppel, CNN, Tokyo. <laughs> When Japan's so-called economic bubble burst at the start of the 1990s, most businesses were hit hard. <gasps> International Security Service, a private bodyguard agency for VIPs, was one of the few exceptions. Its president says that his crimes against corporate executives have increased, with a record 18 assaults and three murders in the past two years alone. The demand for his services has also grown. <laughs> Ever since the anti-organized crime bill was passed in 1992, Japan's legislative authorities have been trying to sever the relationship between Japan's businesses and organized crime syndicates. The authorities are preventing these syndicates from collecting extortion money. But at the same time authorities have been trying to stop extortion, local banks have been trying to collect money from these gangsters or yakuza as they're known here in Japan. According to the finance ministry, during the bubble years, banks handed out well over $100 billion in loans. And while no one knows for sure, it's widely believed that perhaps 10% of those loans may have been lent to the Yakuza. They were good at getting money, not so good at managing it. So now the banks are calling in those bad debts, and the Yakuza don't want to give them up. So there's a great deal of tension out there in the financial community over how to get this money back. At times, that tension has gotten out of control. Most recently in September, an executive director of the Sumitomo Bank, one of Japan's major financial institutions, was murdered in front of his apartment. The victim was one of those in charge of calling in Sumitomo's bad loans. International security service clients include automobile executives, court witnesses, attorneys, and government officials. But in the near future, President Yahara expects he'll be hearing more from bank executives because if Japan's financial institutions continue to attempt to collect from the Yakuza, there is little doubt trouble won't be far away. Andrea Koppel, CNN, Tokyo.